Hello and welcome to New Age Custom Farming. If you're new here, we are a custom farming operation in Wisconsin. My name is Emily and today has been another exciting day at the farm per usual. Harvest is in full swing. Today I had to go this morning to pick up beef for our beef business and then they wrapped up a custom soybean combining job today and we are officially on to combining, if you can see it, combining corn. So we've got a lot of corn acres to go down. It's getting started right here at the home farm. So let's get into this video. I'm trying to get this to focus. Oh my goodness, look at the cat and the calves. The two kittens on the calf. Look at how cute. Before I go show you them combining, which honestly I should go show you them combining first. I was gonna check on the calves, but we'll go over to them combining, but just look at how cute they are. Oh my goodness. So if you saw a few videos back, the tracks on Mason's combine completely busted, but it's back up and running now. It's running in soybeans, you guys saw that. And then it broke yesterday. I don't know what happened with it breaking yesterday. Um, but they got it fixed this morning. We're working on it. I'll ask Greggy because he's Mr. Fix-It Man, as you guys know. And then Mason is off in the distance somewhere over there. He should be coming around soon. Now combining our corn. Bree is loving life. She's a corn dog. Action. What we were doing with the combine before here a little bit ago was that the sieve motor wouldn't adjust and it was a blown fuse. We found it and got it going. Mason checked all the fuses, but I checked him again and found one. And then it worked. So, <laughs> Like we always say, Greggy's Mr. Fix-It. Take a little time. There's a lot of fuses to check and you never know which one it is. So you check them all and I just, he just used up. You have to use an ohm meter to, if there's no power on either side, use an ohm meter just because you want continuity between them. Not, not just use the power probe and check and make sure they're all hot. You know, but it's uh, it takes time, patience. Which we know Mason doesn't have the most. Nope, he does not. Patience. No, nope. I never did when I was young either, but I've, I've learned it's a lot better if you have to use your patience. Yeah. So, Wise words from Greggy. Right, right. <laughs> you can see the top of his combine coming. There's a well, I believe it's a well, in the middle of this field that he's going to have to combine around too. So I'm assuming that's kind of why he looks like he's going all over the place in there. So he's going around that. If you can tell, his lights just came on on the combine, so that's to signify to a green card operator that he's three quarters full, so he's gonna get ready to dump soon. But because we are at the home farm, we're just parking, and this is a small field, we are just parking the straight trucks in, and then he'll go dump into them. So since he's on this end, that's what he's going to do right now. So auger is going out and he's dumping on in.
I have a video from three years ago today of Bree swimming in our manure pit, so I guess the retention pond is slightly better than our manure pit. Really. It's disgusting. You're disgusting. We've got some comments recently on some videos saying that they want to see more of me in here with the cattle and stuff. And that's fine. I can definitely show more of it. However, most of my work here in the cattle barn or calf barn is like, you are in the wrong pen. This calf is supposed to be two pens over. I don't know how it got in here. Um, are you hungry? I'll see you when you drink last. Anyway, <laughs> most of my work here in the calf barn is pretty repetitive. Just every day I come and find whatever calves haven't drank yet, push them up to the robot, fill up the robot, and that's about it. Make sure they have grain, so you're also in the wrong pen. What is going on in here? Anyway, I, I can show you guys some things, but like you said, it's pretty repetitive, so I don't know what more really to show. I guess I can set up the camera and just show me moving cattle and stuff, but that's about it in here. It's very boring, I think very mundane. Basically, I just find whatever calf that I think needs to be able to go up to the robot that maybe hasn't drank in a while or is a new calf and push them up, AKA just take them over there to the robot. And I found a little kitten. are you doing? Our siblings and your mama are on the other side of the barn. Come on. Like I said, very mundane. That's all I gotta do. We have an app that we use to be able to like keep track of who's drinking and who's not drinking, but I still just like having a trusty old notebook that I can write stuff in um, and look back on instead of always looking at my phone. Also, we don't know what happened with these calves this week. As you can see, I wrote dead next to them. Um, yeah, they were not healthy calves at all. They would not drink at all. So I think I posted one video about one where I was trying to get a drink. Anyway, so I just use my handy dandy notebook and the X's are calves that I had to check. Those, um, the first X under the drink column is ones like the first week after we get them, making sure that they're drinking, um, checking them and then their numbers and when we picked them up. And then for example, this calf yesterday didn't drink a lot and then today hasn't drank at all. So I pushed him up into his pen in the robot um, to see if he'll drink on his own. And he's kind of interested, but not really. I've been, we have a button like we can press to send milk to them. I've been doing that and he's been kind of drinking. Um, since he's not super interested in drinking, I don't think a bottle will really work. I will see if Dalton wants to tube it with a bottle of electrolytes or if I should just give him electrolytes. George. Wait, that's not your food. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bree. happening and that's pretty much it for what I have to do with the calves every day um one thing that I do think it's important to note is that 
you know, we're not trying to handle the cattle all the time because when we're in there, especially at this young age and just like in their space, it stresses them out and like always moving them and handling them and stuff stresses them out. So I'm kind of just in there to do my job, make sure that they, that they drink, that they have milk and move on so that they're not getting stressed, which when they're stressed, then they get sick and then they get sick, then they can sell. That's the, uh, that's the job. That's the tea. Well, we've been having a pretty good day of combining until I broke one section off right here. And then I noticed which one, one of these was loose somewhere here. I can see it. It ain't that far down. Where is it? Right here missing a bolt then I noticed down here we're missing quite a few bolts so now I'm waiting on tools and parts to come well it's a beautiful sunshiny afternoon other farm jobs that are happening today while Avery finishes combining beans and Mason starts on corn is Dalton and Oliver are getting ready to go bale corn stalks so we use corn stalks, corn fodder into our bedding for our cattle. So lots of round baling to come there. We have a new Holland baler that we use for that as well. And then um, another guy is planting winter wheat. He's using my drill. So I said to Greggy, I was like, if you ever need to call a girl in, ever need to call a girl in and have somebody else come plant the wheat, give me a call. And that was pretty much it for our day. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting our channel. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.